Dear learners, today we are here to talk about a very introductory topic of management that is the principles of management. The principles which were given by Henry Fiore. So today we will be discussing what is management, then after the principles and what do you actually mean by the 14 principles of management and what are they. So let's proceed on with our learning. So now, knowing what is management. Management is all about managing men, material, money and other resources in the best possible way to achieve desired goals. That is, the objectives that we set. To achieve that objective, we need to work towards it. And while working, we have to manage our men, material, resources, money, the things available the things which we have. With that, we process that, we manage that in the most effective way so that we can achieve the goal that we have desired. It is an art of getting things done through others. Why management? We can do everything, isn't it? Every person thinks that I can do anything in this world. But management is getting the things done by others. Why do we call managers? Why few people are managers? Do you know? It's very simple because they manage the most difficult resource available, that is, men. They get their work done through others. We all are managers as we manage our life, we manage our daily life, daily routine. Early morning, we get up. We know that we have 24 hours in the work in a day, but we have to manage everything. Our studies, our life, our food, our dressing and our time. We should not take more than 24 hours in a day, we cannot. So, that is why we all are managers. Now, defining what is management. According to S. George, one of the learners of management, management consists of getting things done through others. As I have already told, getting things done through people around you. Manager is the one who accomplishes the objective by directing the efforts of others. That means you direct the efforts. Everybody does something or the other. Every human being is doing something. But giving them a direction, showing them what to do is what a manager does. Now what are principles? Why do we have principles? What do you mean by principles? Is it the headmaster of a school? Well, that's P-A-L. This is P-L-E, principle. The spelling differs. So, what is a principle? Principle is a fundamental truth or a proposition that serves as the foundation of a system or belief. That means, it is a set of rules and regulations. It is a set of things, defined lines, on which a system runs. That is a principle. The whole management is also run on principles and that is because it is known as a science. It is known as a profession. So now we talk about why principles of management. Why do we have principles? So it's very simple. Principles are something that is universally accepted. If I'm standing and I'm studying management in Guwahati, it will be the same as it is studied in Delhi or in Calcutta or in any other multinational uh, you know, company or any other institute of the world. It is the same. That is why we have set rules, set defined norms, which are the principles. So now, as we know that management is said to be a science and a profession, and principles are the pillars of the profession, pillars of the science and universal acceptability and the main requirement of any profession. So, principles of management are designed to fulfill the criteria of both science and profession in the best possible way. Now, what is science? Why do we say management is a science? The characteristics that a science has, like, you know, a doctor studying a doctor, a person studying a doctorate, and a person studying management, they both are not doctors, but they both are studying science. Management is said to be a science because it has a systematic body of knowledge. As I said, 
the books available same for all of us we can read the same book which are read in Harvard University or the University of California or IIM Ahmedabad sitting here we can study the same thing the same books and we get to know the same things that they are studying there so it has a systematic body of knowledge then we have its universal acceptability that means all over the universe it is truly accepted as it is then we have the cause and effect relationship as science has every reaction have action same in the management every cause have an effect every effect leads to a cause how now for an example if somebody gives an order that is the cause order is given what is the effect obviously the order is followed the task is done that becomes the effect and there is always a cause and effect relationship between anything that happens in management whether it be your life or it be your organization we have the verification of validity now the principles of management proves how valid it is how valid it is for the thing you are using for example you have a problem in your organization people went for strike and now what to do a person will think what to do how to act uh, in this situation if you refer to the management learners if you refer to the principles if you go back and study some cases that has already happened then you'll get to know how principles are applied so that gives a validity that in this situation if you do this way it can be solved this is given in management so this is always given in science that's why it's science coming to profession management as a profession in every profession when we talk about the word profession a picture comes to our mind a suited booted man with tie and a briefcase in hand why why do we say that we want to become a manager because we have that picture in our mind we want that personality we want to acquire everything that we dream so as profession to be said it has a body of knowledge like any other profession maybe doctorate maybe lawyer a lawyer with a black coat a doctor with a white coat a manager with a tie so it has a body of knowledge everything is set we have books people can learn with the books we have teachers we have learners we have learned people to teach and preach about management now the education every profession to be a professionalist needs a degree a set a education a body of knowledge so we have a certificate we have different certified courses for management in every field in management also it is again divided in so many things marketing branding finance hr and so and so on and so forth so it has a education level that that is very much required for a profession we have application of knowledge the knowledge which we acquire is applied everywhere it is not a wasted of time it is not something that we cannot acquire it is something by learning which we can if we don't do anything professionally we can apply it in our daily life in a more effective way like the time management if we manage our time we can do things in a more better way in our daily life so that is the application of knowledge of management we have a social recognition if you are a manager socially accepted people look at you with a good eye people look upon you that oh he's a manager wow which company what are you doing you have something to talk about you are a figure in the society so that is the social recognition that we get through learning management we have a code of conduct now what is a code of conduct something now my uh, learners would be imagining code of conduct what is it so 
to be very frank, code of conduct is nothing but just wearing a tie or something. Basically, it's a mindset that how should we behave being a professional? Like we have clubs for managers and we have lawyers association. We have managers association now. So that is what we are socially accepted. We have a body of knowledge. We have education and now we are managers. Coming to principles of managing. Henry Fier, that is a famous industrialist of France, also known as the father of management, as I told, has described 14 principles of management. So coming to the principle, the first principle is division of work. That means dividing the whole work into smaller tasks, which is very important because as an individual, if I take a responsibility of doing something, I cannot do the whole thing in a, in a day or by myself. So if I divide the same work in smaller parts and give it to, our, to my subordinates or to my colleagues, we can have the same task done in a lesser duration with more effectivity. So now, division of work is based on three basic features. That is, the work is divided into smaller tasks, then it is divided on the basis of individual specialization. For example, if I have to draft an advertisement, I am good at thinking and my colleague is good at designing. So I would give him the designing work rather than me doing everything. It will help me finish up my work in a more effective way and that too in a short duration. That's why we have division of work. Then, according to individual taste and his ability, I cannot give a task to someone, I cannot give a marketing task to someone who doesn't know the M of marketing. That will end up being a disaster. So it is important to uh, know the individual taste and his ability before dividing the work. The second principle is parity between authority and responsibility. Authority, authority is something which is known as the power to do something. The company gives us some power or we take some power to do something that is the authority responsibility is the obligation the accountability and the answerability that comes along with the authority so authority and responsibility should always go hand in hand if somebody has authority he must understand his responsibility and should work accordingly if authority and responsibility are not together it will never gain respect for you. For that, you must always take care of your authority and fulfillment of your responsibility. The third principle is principle of discipline. Principle of discipline, that means a discipline should always be maintained in an organization. There should be a set rules and regulations norms of the organization to be followed by every individual in the same manner. Now we can have discipline in an organization by following these three simple process that is by having good supervision at all the levels whether it be the middle level, the supervisory level or even the top level. To maintain discipline we must have good supervision, good command on all the levels. Now we have by entering into clear and fair agreements with individuals and with the unions. Now, clear and fair agreements. Whatever rules, whatever norms we have, it should be clear to everyone. It should not be like your timing is 7.30 and the other person on the same job will have a timing from 8 and you don't take any action. That cannot be done. It will create more fights among your employees. It will create more chaos. People won't be motivated to work in the organization. Then by assuring that penalties are judicially imposed. That is, whatever penalty you impose, if a person doesn't abide by, you must have it judicially imposed. You cannot just spare anybody. That won't give a discipline in your organization. The fourth principle is principle of unity of command. That means there should be just one superior commanding one subordinate that's it because if you have more than one superior suppose 
you are working in an organization and one person comes up to you your boss and says that you have to give me this report by evening your other boss comes up and says i want this report by evening that's another report now for whom will you work can you make two reports a big ones in the same day imagine it's not possible you can just make one whom will you follow you won't feel like working there will be a chaos you will have a role conflict so it is very important to have one person giving orders and one person listening to it for the single work which is known as unity of command unity of command helps you helps the organization uh, to maintain a proper line of uh, orders in the organization there won't be any wastage there won't be any confusion there won't be any chaos in the organization and employees will be more motivated to give their best towards the organization then we have the unity of direction which states that there should be one head for one plan for a group of activities for example you are organizing a tour or you are organizing a picnic say then and you have three people organizing it will three of you go and uh, like uh, book a bus three buses no obviously not you will divide the work one will go to book the bus second will go to uh, collect the money from the people who are going third will make the list and the food will take care of so that is unity of direction in one direction there should be one head if for food you have two heads there will always be chaos somebody will say i want spicy food somebody will say no i i want sweets so unity of direction one head for one plan for one activity it assures unity of action and coordination among the employees and it avoids wastage it avoids over expenditure and it also avoids useless competition between the employees the unhealthy competition coming to the sixth principle it is given subordination of individual interest to general interest that means every individual all of us we have some interest like i want to be a manager same way you all you have some dreams you have your interest you want to be a manager that's why we all are here studying management but if you go to an organization you must always subordinate your interest to the general interest of the organization it's not that while thinking of your interest you end up doing a big loss for the organization no of course not that will be very bad so you must fulfill the organization interest in a way that your own personal interest is also fulfilled and the organization also has got no harm then we have the principle of fair remuneration that means every person at the same level should be paid according to their ability should be should have equal remunerations it's not that there are two managers looking after the same thing and are paid in a very different manner like you are getting 30000 and your friend is getting 50000 will you be motivated to work in that organization no you will always have a thing in your mind that why he is getting 50 and i'm getting 30 working on the same post so the principle states that to have a proper functioning in your organization you must have fair remuneration for all eighth principle goes principle of centralization and decentralization now what is centralization that means the authority the authority is centered at the head office or at the head of the department they have all the authority to take any kind of decision and the subordinates will just follow it that is 